Hello everyone. Um, today you are going to be modeling a lab which models the process of the rock cycle. Um, now there are about three main parts to this lab. Um, each part represents uh, modeling sedimentary rocks and how they form, metamorphic rocks and how they form, and igneous rocks and how they form. And before you do each of these steps, you are going to be given a reading and a video to watch about the step um, for wherever you are on. So for example, you're gonna start with sedimentary rocks and you'll start by watching the video and doing the reading. And in your packet, you'll have to take some notes about those steps within the sedimentary um, process of the rock cycle. So make sure you do that first. And then when you are done, you will be able to begin your lab with your lab group. And the main supply, which will model our rock today is going to be an airhead. Um, so starting with sedimentary rock site, or process of the rock cycle, um, you have now done your reading in your video, and you are going to start by modeling weathering, which is breaking the rock down typically through, you know, rain, wind, in Wisconsin, snow, and any other factors. So weathering is simply breaking down rocks, so you would break down your airhead into pieces. I'm only going to do half of this because I don't need all of this for my video. Um, the next part of the lab is going to model erosion and erosion is the movement of the rock sediments. So the sediments are these pieces. Um, so the movement of um, rock sediments from one place to another. So with your lab group, each of you will have um, different colored airheads and how you're going to move your airheads is take a couple pieces and kind of just equally distribute different colors of your rock pieces to each of your lab members. So I have a couple orange here from my lab partner. I'm gonna give a couple purple to my other lab partners and that models erosion. Now the next part is called deposition, which is where sediments drop down to wherever they're being moved to. So essentially when you had picked them up and moved them, you modeled both erosion and deposition. So kind of like dropping them into their place. Um, and then the next part of the sedimentary um, rock cycle is using compaction, which is applying pressure to the different pieces of sediments. So for example, I will take my purple and orange pieces of airhead and I will just kind of press them together. And now there is one final step to this process, which we will not do today in this lab, but that's uh, like cementing them together. Um, so that is where they kind of actually glue and stick together. Um, that kind of is already done with compacting them here. So that's why we're not going to do that step. But now we have modeled how sedimentary rocks form in the rock cycle. So take a look at your airhead and in your packet, you're going to kind of draw a picture of what it looks like and then also write a written description of what this looks like. So for example, um, there's like different colors in here. Also, it could easily fall apart if I dropped it, you know, at a high enough spot. Um, and there's a little bit of layers between the coloring. Now, if you had more than two colors, you might be able to notice those layers a little bit more. And that is how you model the sedimentary part of the rock cycle. Next, you're going to want to jump into the metamorphic uh, part of the rock cycle. So same thing you did before. You'll watch the video and do the reading on how metamorphic rocks, rocks form and then take notes in your packet. Once you're done with that, with your lab group, you will then follow the steps for metamorphic rocks. So I still have the same rock. It's sedimentary right now, but I want to change it to a metamorphic rock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by rolling this airhead in my hand because that creates heat um, from the friction of my hand to the sediments of the airhead or the rock. So metamorphic rocks need heat. And then the next thing they need after heat is formed is pressure. So I'm actually going to take this now that there's some heat there. I'm going to tilt my camera down and I'm going to set it down on the table and add some pressure. So simply just pushing down on it. Not all the way. It doesn't need to be flat. Rocks aren't fully flat. So I push down on it and now I have formed a metamorphic rock. Um, just like what you did with sedimentary rocks, draw what you see and write down your observations um, like what it looks like. So for example, there's still colors um, kind of in a layered 
See how orange is layered and then purple is layered. And um, it holds together pretty well compared to the sedimentary rock. The pieces were sucked together, but not too tightly. So these are um, holding together pretty well. And then the last part of the rock cycle is um, igneous rocks. So just like before, uh, do the guided reading and the video, record notes into your packet, and then follow the steps for the igneous rock cycle. So I'm going to do that here. Um, and there's two types of rocks that you can model um, as an igneous rock. There's intrusive igneous rocks and extrusive igneous rocks. So to model an intrusive igneous rock, you are going to start by placing an airhead in a tin tray like this that your teacher will give you. And you are going to heat it heat it over hot water. So I'll get my rock into my tray. I'll go to my teacher with my styrofoam cup or a beaker and a hot pad for if that beaker's hot and have your teacher pour hot water for you. So I'm going to fill up, let's move my camera. I'm going to fill up this all, almost all the way to the top and then take this tray and there's a little clip on the end, please be careful so you don't burn your finger and kind of set the tray, it actually floats so I can kind of let that float there. And I'm just gonna give it a minute, it won't melt completely, but I'm just gonna give it a second um, on the tray in the hot water. Now let's say heat was being applied to this. I'm not going to sit and have it melt the entire time. Let's say heat had been applied to this long enough. You would notice that the airhead would eventually um, start to melt from the hot water and then those colors might start mixing. Um, so that models the intrusive igneous rock. Um, it's going to melt and then if I took it out, it would eventually harden in the tray and the colors would mix together. However, I'm not going to do that in this video. So that models intrusive igneous rocks, but to model extrusive igneous rocks, I would take this tray and set it into cold water. And that cold water is going to harden the, the airhead or the rock compared to if I had taken it out, it would, it would harden and cool down just here on the surface. But for this, or sorry, not on the surface, inside the earth. Um, but then this is like adding a rock to the surface and allowing it to cool down. And in your packet, when you finish, again, draw what your airhead looks like, describe what it looks like. It's holding together well. Um, all the colors will be mixed because they had then melted together. And um, that is it for the Rock Cycle Lab.